One of the amazing things about human nature is the ability to adapt to change. But sometimes the will to adapt isn't as strong as the need to hold on to what makes us feel secure. And that's what our story's about on this episode of Still the Beaver. Washing his shoelaces. To think just a couple of years ago we had to hold him down to scrub his neck. I think it's sweet that he wants to look nice for his first day of high school. Dad, when I'm Kip's age, is it okay if I dress like a pig as long as I get good grades? Sure. Einstein was no snappy dresser. Good morning, everybody. Well, don't you look nice? Oh, this? I just grabbed the first thing I found in the drawer. Come on, sit down. Breakfast is all ready. Oh, Grandma, I better not eat. I got first period gym, and I may have to hang upside down from the rings. If you're gonna hang upside down, how come you spend so much time combing your hair? Maybe Kip wants to make a good first impression. Why is he wearing that shirt? Oliver, you'll understand when you get to high school. There are gonna be a lot of changes when you go to Mayfield High. A different teacher for every class, a lot more students. And they even have a coach who isn't somebody's father. Which reminds me, Dad. I need you to sign this permission form so I can try out for soccer. My pleasure. With your talent, I'm surprised they're even making you try out. I'm sure it's just a formality. Oh, Grandma, there's a lot more competition there. I'll be lucky if I make the starting team. I'm just proud you're trying out. When I first went to high school, I had trouble just keeping track of my class schedule. I finally had to sew it inside his cap. <laughs> well, I guess this is it. This is it? You mean you're going off just like that? Sure. I gotta go over to Freddy's. We're gonna walk to school together. First day, he's a little nervous. I can't believe it, Mom. Our little Kip is going to high school. Well, pretty soon he'll be getting a car and then he'll be gone for good. Oh, please, Dad, don't get mushy on me. <laughs> I'm getting a little choky, too. Kip, I've never been to school without you being there. You'll be okay, Allie. Yeah, but it's a lot easier calling some guy a doofus when your big brother's in the next classroom. <laughs> Mom, what's taking Dad so long up there? It's already 7.42. I can't be late. Now, honey, you 
have half an hour. It's only your first day of school. Not the raid on Aunt Tebby. You don't understand. If I'm there late, I'll have to sit next to Tammy Burns, the drooler. <laughs> oh, yes, I remember your birthday party. <laughs> remember when I told you that I couldn't shave any faster? I was right. <laughs> Mary Ellen, can I borrow your car keys? Am I blocking you? No, we're trading cars. Puppy's car was stolen again. I gotta pick up JJ. Oh, honey, I can't drive your Corvette. Well, sure you can. I added your name to the insurance this year. Mom, do I look like I'm in any condition to drive a sports car? But the Corvette doesn't have a back seat. Where's JJ gonna sit? Tired of the hood. Just get me a school. Oh, Kelly, please. Can't you just switch cars with Beaver? The way he drives? Okay, okay, Wally. No problem. Take my car. I'll hitchhike. Shouldn't take too long for an expectant woman to get a ride. Look, Mary Ellen, it's not my fault the vet only comes with two seats. Well, maybe it's time he got rid of that expensive toy and bought something more practical, huh? Forget it. I'll switch with Mom. At least she doesn't ride the clutch like Beaver does. Sitting next to the drooler won't be so bad. I'll just wear a raincoat every day. <laughs> We've yet to make any arrangements regarding lunch money. Don't worry, son. A client's taking me out. I'm relieved, sir. Freddie, when was the last time we had an earthquake around here? Well, I believe the last seismic tremor of any consequence struck in 1896. Yeah, then we don't need this beam. <laughs> Must be Kip. Hey, Freddie, you ready to go? I got my class list, my gym clothes, and my comb. Well, I guess that's everything. Not quite. If memory serves me well, I wouldn't go into that building without some life insurance. What do you mean by that, Mr. Haskell? Uh, Kip, perhaps we should get there early so we could start memorizing the school song. Not a chance, Lance. You'll see. High school is a pits. Oh, come on. It can't be that bad. It was the worst time of my life. And that's saying something. <laughs> you see, the teachers are all out to flunk you. Because if they don't meet their quota, they don't get paid. <laughs> and if the homework don't break you, just wait till the big kids start picking on you. And uh, judging by the looks of you two, that shouldn't take too long. Sir, your sense of humor is refreshing as usual. And I'll remember this moment when the day begins to lag. You won't be laughing when you find out the girls won't even look at you. Take it from me, you'll be lucky if they spit on you. Oh, well. Just remember, it only lasts four years. <laughs> now go make me proud. Suddenly, I wish I was Dennis Kowalski. The guy who got left back? Exactly. <laughs> Come on, snap out of it, guy. This is a great place. If you get a permission slip, they let you go off campus for lunch. Hey, that sounds pretty good. And look out all the drinking fountains are. And they have pay phones, so you can make crank calls between classes. I'm telling you, this place could be paradise. Maybe so. Maybe so. I'm telling you, there's nothing to it. We're gonna be okay here, as long as we stick together. Sure, Sam. We're a team. Yeah. Well, here it is, in 114, our homeroom. Uh, no, we're in 132. I guess they gave us different homerooms. Well, that's not fair. How could they do that to us? Well, obviously, they assign homerooms by good looks. And you didn't make the cut. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't worry. I'm sure we have some classes together. Just one. History. What a shame. I already planned to ditch that one most of the year. I'm gonna miss you, buddy. Uh, yeah, I'll miss you too. Uh, excuse me, young lady. Allow me to examine your desk so you won't be frightened by any offensive graffiti. <laughs> You gotta inspect all food coming into this school. Hey, give it back. Sorry, it's for your own protection. You don't want to cause an epidemic. 
Uh oh. What's this? Tuna. And chocolate chip cookies. I better get this stuff right to the lab. Oh, come on, guys. Lay off. Hey, we'd like to. But you got some illegal stuff there, fella. We'll probably let you off easy and not report you this time. Hey, you bring your lunch to school every day? Yeah. Good. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Catch you later. a friendly face. I almost didn't recognize you. You've grown so much since June. Oh, yeah. I can see everything in back of the freezer now. <laughs> well, um, I got your letters from camp. Did you finally end up swimming across the lake? Well, I would have. But on my last day, I had to stop and rescue these guys in an overturned canoe. Oh, wow. Let's see, I got fourth period lunch. How about you? Uh, yeah, me too. Maybe you and I could, you know, tomorrow. Ah! Ronnie! Gracie, you look great. I haven't seen you since your brother's pool party. Yeah, that was some great party. My dad almost had to resign from the force. Come on. Let me give you a guy to tour around our campus. Who's that guy? Oh, nobody. station wagon. It seats nine people. Great. I can take the Detroit Tigers out for dinner. I'd settle for your being able to take Kelly and a friend to a junior chipmunk meeting. Listen, honey, I'm trying to keep an open mind about this whole thing, but look at those cars. So boring, square. Look, there's even one that's called a box. <laughs> you know, something with style, flair, excitement. I know. You prefer a car that seats two can't start half the time, can't drive in the rain, and get seven miles to the gallon. Twelve on the highway. Um, I know you love that car. I love it, too. But our lives have changed. It just doesn't fit our needs anymore. Well, I suppose I could pick up a moderately priced sedan with four doors, air conditioning, and a clock that works. Really? Sure. I just keep the vet for weekends and occasional rallies. It's just simple mathematics. We can't afford three cars, two kids in one house. How attached are you to Kelly? <laughs> Honey, that was a joke. Remember those? Of course I'm being silly. Of course my family means more to me than a hunk of metal on wheels. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should wait till next year's models come out. A joke, right? <laughs> come on, son. That's enough studying. I want you to get a good night's sleep. Soccer tryouts are tomorrow. Yeah, I'm sort of losing my fascination with the Fertile Crescent of Mesopotamia anyway. Your grandmother said that you stopped by your old school again today. Well, I wanted to walk Oliver home. 
I think he's having a tough time without me around. <laughs> well, that's nice of you, son, but he's a pretty tough little fella. I think maybe you ought to concentrate on your new school. Are you making any friends? Well, sure. In fact, I met these two guys who could hardly wait to have lunch with me tomorrow. <laughs> Great, son. But now you better hit the sack. I want you to show them what you're made of tomorrow at tryouts. Okay, Dad. <laughs> Oh, nothing much, Freddy. Hey, want to try for soccer with me? No time for that sweaty kid stuff. I'm on my way to computer club. We tied into the computer at Mayfield Savings and found out how much everybody has in the bank. Uh, you better make something of yourself, Kip, because there ain't much of an inheritance coming your way. Oh, it was easy. I stood on the hood. Well, you do good work, honey, but, um, you know, I'll tell you what we really need. You want me to wax the seat? No, I was thinking more like maybe some ice-cold lemonade. Oh, I get it. I didn't do a good job. Oh, honey, you did a perfect job. <laughs> it's just that, uh, I feel a little nervous about letting a perfect stranger test drive my car. Oh, I understand, Dad. I felt the same way the night JJ slept over and she borrowed my toothbrush. <laughs> what am I worried about? Because you nobody even sees the ad. Hey, Cleaver. Saw your ad. So how come you're selling your car? You need some cash to bribe a judge? <laughs> Look at Eddie, I'm not in a very good mood right now. Yeah, that was a cheap shot. It's not my fault you're afraid to stand up to your wife. Look, I've got a growing family. This car just isn't practical anymore. Well, where's your sense of priorities? If you sell a vet, how are we going to cruise Main Street on Thursday nights? <laughs> hey, we haven't cruised Main Street in 20 years. And now, thanks to you, we'll never be able to again. <laughs> Look, you think this is easy for me? <laughs> well, remember when those 62s first came out? You, me, and the lump rushed down to the showroom and sat in one? Yeah. I still got the gear shift knob. <laughs> that was the most beautiful car I'd ever seen in my whole life. Right then and there, I swore that I'd own one. But times have changed, Eddie. We're different people now. Yeah, I'll say. In the old days, you'd never let chicks push you around. <laughs> All right, look, Eddie, why don't you just get out of here before I do something I'm going to regret? Hey, temper, temper. Is that any way to treat a customer? You? Sure. This wing a deal. You give me the car, I'll throw on some dual carbs, bolt on some slicks, and head for the drag strip. Two weeks, I'll have your dough. All right, Eddie, get out of there. I'm not selling my car to you or anybody else. Hey, all right, all right. I know when I'm not wanted. At least I know enough not to wax the windshield. Daddy, Daddy, there's some guy here who says he wants to buy your car. Did your mother see him? Mm-hmm. Oh. Well, I guess we better go talk to him then, huh? Mm-hmm. Hey, there's a kid out there and he's serious. He wants to buy my car. What'll I do? Well, if you pretend like you don't want to sell it, you can drive the price up. But I don't want to sell it. Hey, that's very convincing. Keep that up and you'll make a killing. Beaver, I don't want to make a killing. I just want to keep my car. Yeah, and I want Oliver to chew his food before he swallows it. That's life. Beaver, you don't understand. When I was in high school, I had two dreams. One was to own a Corvette, and the other was to marry a beautiful blonde. 
Now the beautiful blonde wants me to sell the Corvette. <laughs> well, you can forget about dreams. When the new baby comes, you won't even have time to sleep. Look at that guy out there, sitting in my car. Huh. I bet he couldn't be older than 25 years old. Oh. Well, you know, there's only one way a kid like that gets that kind of money, and I am not going to be party to it. Wally, you and I are brothers, and we can say things in an honest and sensitive way that other people couldn't even express to one another. You're acting like a real baby. <laughs> I am not. Or two. I am not. <laughs> Okay, okay, so I have a boyish quality. Isn't that what people like about Johnny Carson? Uh, as I remember, Mr. Carson has been married several times. <laughs> Dad, Grandma, what do you see, Kip? Oh. Oh, Kip! What happened? Kip, are you all right? Hey, what's the matter? It's nothing. I guess I was in such a hurry to get soccer trials, I tripped coming down the stairs. Oh. Pretty stupid, huh? Really stupid. Well, go get a nice bag, will you? Okay. But promise to call me if he starts passing out. I'll be the first to know. Come on, let's get the weight off that ankle. Nice. Oh. Oh. Let's sit down over here and get your leg up. Oh. Be careful with his foot now. I'm gonna call Dr. Harris. Uh, no, I'll be okay in a couple of weeks. It just means I can't go out for soccer, that's all. We don't take any chances with things like this. Oh, Grandma, don't bother Dr. Harris. He's probably right in the middle of transplanting some livers or something. Kip, I know you don't like to go to the doctor, but if you don't get this checked, it might get worse. You might end up missing the whole season. But it's beginning to feel better already, really. Come on, Kip, you want it to heal properly, don't you? This is June Cleaver calling. Could I speak to Dr. Harris, please? Okay, fine. I made the whole thing up. See? My leg's fine. <laughs> Dr. Harris? Um... I was just calling to tell you how beautifully my wrist healed. Yes, I know it was seven years ago, but I did want to thank you again. Bye. I suppose you have an explanation for this. Sort of. Well, son? Oh, you want to hear it too? Yep. Well, you see, I got to the gym, and I was ready to go in. You wouldn't understand. I don't even understand. I guess I'm, I'm just not good enough for the team. Well, how would you know if you didn't even try out? It's the same with everything in high school. The older kids get to do everything. We're just there to make them feel like big shots. Boy, I wish I was back at Grand Avenue. Grand Avenue? The first day you went there, I practically had to drag you into the classroom. All you wanted was to go back to your old school. But after the first couple of weeks, you were having the time of your life. Kip, it's only natural to want to hang on to the things that make you feel secure. But, uh, like your father just reminded me, there comes a time in your life when you have to grow up. Gotta let go of the past and move on to new challenges, whether it's trying to fit into a bigger school or a bigger car. What if I don't make it? Then you're no worse off than you are now. But if you do make it, you'll really have accomplished something. Come on, what do you say, son? Well, if I hurry, I bet you I could be there before tryouts are over. Hey, that's great. I'll take you. I've got some great excuses for being late. Hey, wait a second. You don't want to forget these. Thanks, Uncle Wally. Hi, I'm very Hi, Hi, Wally, I've stalled that kid with lemonade, pretzels, and cookies. Now, are you going to show him the car, or am I going to set another place at the dinner table? I'm ready, Mary Ellen. Time for me to get rid of that gas guzzler and get something else. <laughs> so, um, what do you think's a fair asking price? Fifty? Sixty thousand? Another joke, right? <laughs> now, no peeking. Oh, Mary Ellen. I don't know how to thank you. I should have done this a long time ago. I know you're going to love it as much as I do. Ta-da! That's nice, Dad. What is it? Well, it's a 1963, almost perfectly restored T-Bird. Well? I'll say one thing for you. You are consistent. <laughs> Thanks, honey. I knew you'd love it. Come on, Dad. Let's take it for a spin. Hey, no problem. <laughs> Up in.
In seats five, uh, almost comfortably. <laughs> okay, buckle up. Here we go. Well, at least the clock works. <laughs> 